<laughs> the whole thing. The assistant to the CEO of Starbucks says, well, here's the deal. Doc Spady went to elementary school with the CEO of Starbucks. When he looked at the three finalists, he was trying to think about what he could find out about the person, knowing you're all three good lawyers. So he called up his buddy he knew in fifth grade, because he saw he, you guys were at the same law firm. <laughs> so it was really his buddy from fifth grade, who's the male guy in the law firm, <laughs> who gets her the job. So in many cases, how do you treat the male guy? How do you treat the assistant? It's really, really amazing. And now these days, there was a recruiting firm that shared with me that they have the whole checklist of everybody when they bring a, a prospect in. They do that. The final person who says whether or not they're going to actually put that person in the candidate pool is the receptionist. Because the receptionist sees how she treats, how the candidate treats people in the public, how they treat her. And so in many cases, these gatekeepers are going to be absolutely your ticket to moving forward um, here in, at, the, at the organization. So you do want to exchange cards, and then you want to get into your follow-up system, which is your one-on-one, -on -one, and you begin to digest who you want to meet on the one-on-one. -on -one. So briefly, any questions about what we've talked about so far with the how to work a room before I go into the one-on-one? -on -one? Yes. Yep. Okay, excellent. So what I do at, when I go to my um, networking events or, you know, any of the sort of venues sort of a thing, I have what I call an A list, a B list, and a C list. So A is my action. Courtney, I owe you the name of a restaurant. I owe you, you know, some information. And it kind of ends there. But right away I can action this. B are the people who I want to see again. Second meeting. And, and I want to go from my you know, event to my one-on-one. -on -one. And the C is what I call whenever, if ever. And people I've liked, I have a nice conversation with them, but there's no immediate action. So right here with these B people, this is kind of, I mean, this is, your, this is your quick get it done. And I actually will share with you, I have email templates. I have these all pre-built. Dear blank, it was nice to see you at blank event. <laughs> I promised you the name of three restaurants in San Francisco. Have a great time. Let me know how it turned out. In most cases, I'll never hear from them again. On occasions, they will get back to me. But you can do this all. You can preset these in templates. If you use Outlook, you can actually do it as a signature. So you can have your signature. And I have this as a signature for the press. Dear Mike, it was great to read about your you know, acceptance into the program. Congratulations on your continued success. So I have these all set, fast, easy, done. I mean, when it's a pouring, miserable day of rain, like we've had a lot, <laughs> I can get these things all done. So then when, it, when it's a beautiful day and I really don't want to do them, it's just really nice and quick and simple. The B group is when I start my follow-up and I get into my one-on-one. -on -one. What I typically do is I try and get this done within 48 hours. And I say, I would love to have a cup of coffee with you. Now, here's my thing. Coffee versus lunch. I do not ask for lunch. Lunch is long. If you invite, you should pay. I'm sure the people you're inviting have larger salaries than you. <laughs> you still should pay. It's a thoughtful thing to do. It's a great gesture for you to do. And it's much more likely, even for a cup of coffee, I say, what's your favorite? Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts? I'm happy to come by. Nine times out of 10, they say, hey, we've got coffee here in the office. Come on by. But if I ask for a 15-minute cup of coffee, and here's the important thing, Courtney, is I say, why? Here's why I'd like to talk to you. And this is really important, because if you don't know why you're going to be in there, you're probably not going to have as good of a time as you'd like to. Also, what's really tough is when you get in there and you haven't thought of your why, and all of a sudden you're like, Oh, wow, here's all these different things. I'm not prepared. And you're probably not going to want to walk in with your resume because you kind of got a job. <laughs> One thing you can do, and I can send this to you if you want to, is I have something called a networking snapshot. And it's a kind of a fun little you know, overview of who I am as a person, where I've lived, the businesses I've been involved with, my hobbies. Um, you know, and it's, it, it kind of gives you an overview of who I am. But you want to know why. And what I like to do is I want to know, everybody's read or listened to this radio station? What's this radio station stand for? What's in it for me? 
It's the world's biggest radio station. What's in it for me? <laughs> so you're walking to that meeting, what's in it for me? The person you're sitting down with is what's in it for me. So if you can articulate the reason I like to have 15 minutes with you, Diane, is X, Y, and Z. Now here's another little trick. Here are three times that work for my calendar. Do any of these work for you? I don't say the next two weeks are open. It's, you're, you're making them work. Make it simple. Make them say, is it Friday at 10? Is it Tuesday at 9? Is it Wednesday at 4? You know, go right away to being the fact, again, you're really easy to work with. And then you go in there, you're going to do your dyslexic introduction. <laughs> you know, I'm the person from Michigan in the program, or I'm the person who's assigned to this, this, and this. My name is, and thank you for your 15 minutes. You pull out your watch, and you say, just want to be sure we've got a start, stop time at, at 9.30. One of my most amazing times I did this was with the CEO of Ernst & Young. And it was incredible. I mean, he actually gave me time. And, and I, I ended up telling him an accountant joke, which I couldn't believe I told him. But um, do you know how you can tell an accountant is an extrovert? She's looking at your shoes. That takes a minute to kick in for some people. <laughs> then there's the technology joke I have, which is actually about how can you pr tell about the proof that Al Gore invented the internet? It's based on an Al Gore rhythm. <laughs> I stole that one from a techie. I didn't, and of course, there's a lawyer one. How can you tell a lawyer's lying? His lips are moving. <laughs> I mean, I, and actually, what happens is you get great jokes from those audiences. I mean, I, they, they tell me more money, more jokes than you do, than I have. But you have this kind of, and you want to be sure you understand what you want out of these 15 to 20 minutes. In many cases, it kicks into a half an hour. The next thing I know, I had 40 minutes with the CEO of Ernst & Young. Um, and when I asked him, what's your biggest pet peeve about networking, he says, people who come in here saying they're really interested in my philanthropy, but they want a job at Ernst & Young. So you want to be sure what your why is, is why you're there. <laughs> you know, I'm interested in your career. Well, guess what? You can probably read about that on Google. <laughs> you know, what about their career? What about them? What about the specific person? There's a lot of people who can tell you about careers at Fidelity. But what about the specific person that you are talking to and why that time is important? So then you want to be very clear. Then you want to be, oh, sorry. Yep. I was going to ask, can you tell us any techniques for saving 15, 20 Well, a couple of things is you want to have a notebook. You know, or in, in the United States, it's perfectly fine to write on the back of people's cards. I don't tend to exchange cards with somebody until I've had a conversation. To me, it's conversation first, cards later. So you may not have the card. But what you might want to do is, it Mike or Michael? Mike. So I'm going to say, Mike, I'm enjoying this conversation. And you know what? I'm frankly not going to remember these five things. Let me pull out a notebook. And do you mind if I follow up with you in the next few days? Again, that shows to me you're paying attention. And I have lots of people who, I mean, when I speak, I have lots of people, I'd like to have 15 minutes with you. You said you were going to give me 15 minutes. I said, well, not really. <laughs> what I said was, tell me why I should give you 15 minutes. What about our conversation made sense? So if you say, Diane, you know, here's what made sense, and here's why I'd like to talk to you, it means that you've paid attention. So I will give you the 15 minutes versus the person who said, you know, hey, I want 15 minutes. I had someone the other day, well, I want to talk to you for 20 minutes. And I was just like, well, you know, can you tell me why? Well, it's a little bit too complicated to explain on the phone. And I'm like, I can explain my business in five seconds on the phone. And I kind of was like, do you want to date me or do you want to? It turned out it was a multi-level marketing thing, which I don't have anything against, but just tell me that's what it is. When I was in California on Sunday, there was a whole bunch of multi-level marketing people in my workshop. And this woman said, well, I want to make my seven friends millionaires. I said, why don't you be honest and say you want to make yourself a millionaire by your seven friends making you a millionaire? <laughs> and I, you know, again, I don't mind it. It's just that sort of sense of, you know, why? So, but if you have a notebook, I mean, I have my journal here that I take, this is, and I go through these. I mean, this is what I do. I have, I take these with me. Or I have a small spiral one I use as well when I'm at an event. Um, you want to have something that can fit in your pocket. And again, you guys are so lucky. Men, you'll never try and buy a suit with no pockets. Ladies, you just have to buy the suits that have pockets. <laughs> you know, when you're in the business world, you know, I, one of the slides I use sometimes when I'm in big groups is I have a pic three pictures of Tom Brady. One, he's in his uniform. One, he's in T-shirt and jeans. And one, he, he's in his, you know, black tie with Giselle. And I said, what's the right outfit?